Greetings, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College, bringing you the next in their series of What to Look For in the Night Sky. It's March 31, so basically the first week of April this time around. Good spring sky. Start with little moon. We end with quite a bit of moon. So you want to get out. You want to observe the, the galaxies of spring that we'll talk about a little bit. Do it in the first half of the week if you can. Uh, so on the evening of the 31st, uh, the first night, you got a 10% full moon, so a beautiful thin crescent moon right after sunset. In the glow of sunset, go out and enjoy that beautiful thin crescent. On the first, the evening of the first, it will be 17, 18% full, and it will be sitting about a fist and a half uh, northwest of Jupiter. So you've got big, bright Jupiter, you've got the moon, a beautiful crescent still at, at, at 17, 18% full. And Aldebaran is the bright orange star that's about 8 degrees. About a little over half the distance separates Jupiter and Aldebaran is what separates Jupiter and the moon. So, so look for that triangle of beautiful objects in the evening sky. By the time we get to the evening of the 5th, uh, so working our way through the week, the moon will be 60% full. And we've talked about how Mars, this is Mars right here, how Mars has been moving from a sort of right triangle with Castor and Pollux, the two bright stars, in Gemini, we're going to be in a straight line. We're still at this point a few days away from that. Beginning of next week, we'll talk about how Castor, Pollux, and Mars are making a straight line in the sky. But the, tonight, enjoy the moon sitting right there with them. Castor, Pollux, Mars, and the moon, 60% full. Uh, great, great evening to go out and see uh, a beautiful moon paired with bright objects in the sky. Two bright stars and Mars. Mars is passing, as we talked about uh, last week, uh, passing Kappa Geminorium. Uh, this relatively faint star in there. On the 31st, the 1st, and the 2nd, it will be less than about on the, less uh, than or on the order of half a degree away. So half a finger width at arm's length away from the star. And then that, that distance will open up quite a bit by week's end. So the first few nights of the week, get your binoculars out and enjoy that, that star that's sitting right next to, to Mars this week. Uh, so that's what we've got with the moon and the planets in the evening sky. What we have, we're going to think about now, beautiful time in the spring. So Virgo, Leo, these are the ideal markers of spring. And one of the reasons we think about this uh, as being a spring sky is because the, the Virgo region of the sky is up all night right now. It, we say the north-south line that passes directly overhead is the meridian, and stars that are on the meridian around midnight will be up in the sky when it gets dark and will still be up in the sky when it gets to be daylight. They're basically up all night, well well positioned for observing. And that's what we got right now. Uh, this region of Virgo is on the meridian at about midnight. It starts with bright spica down here. You move up to Parima and then over to Zanaya and Zavi Java. And then there's a couple of fainter stars that wrap in there. And up the other direction, you've got Delta and Vendemiatrix. Uh, which is the star that's up uh, the tip of the left side. Looks like a martini glass. We've talked about this before uh, a little bit. I've probably got this side up a little bit too high. It's probably more down right there. Spike is big, bright, first magnitude star. Parima is a 2.7 magnitude star. Going off to the, the west side of the martini glass, the Y shape, Zanaya and Zavijava are, are both 3.6, 3.9, so closer to fourth magnitude star. Not quite as bright. Delta is right there with them at 3.4. But then Vindemiatrix is a little bit brighter, again, at 2.9 magnitude. Up here is the, the tail of Leo. Dana Bola is a nice bright 2.1 magnitude star that's up this direction. We talk about this star a lot, and we like it because it's relatively close to the ecliptic, so the moon and the planets will go past here. And uh, it's a nice bright star at the base of the cup of the of the martini glass, and it's a, it's a beautiful binary star. And it's a fun binary star because it has a 170-year orbital period. Right now, the two stars are about equal brightness, three and a half magnitude stars. So you've got this nice equal brightness um, pair of stars in the sky, separated by about three and a half arc seconds. Uh, should be doable with just about any small telescope that you have. So this is uh, a good object for us to be, to be checking out right now. Uh, well, it's fine. This has an elliptical orbit. So, you know, what, this is one of the things that Kepler figured out is the planets move around the sun in elliptical orbits. Everything orbits the center of mass of, the, of, of the, whatever system it's in, in an elliptical orbit, as opposed to a circular orbit. There's a circular orbit. An elliptical orbit is elongated. Uh, and in this case, you can watch 
uh, these two stars get very close together. Less than an arc second separates them. You wouldn't be able to see them as separate stars. That happened 20 years ago. And now, because when the two objects are close to each other, they're moving much faster in their orbit. That's also what we figured out from Kepler, one of Kepler's laws. And we see that the, the separation is really growing rapidly. It'll get up to about 6.2 arc seconds after about 135 years. So about what's, we're 20 years into it. So about 115 years from now. It'll be a 6.2 arc second separation, but it's growing rapidly right now because uh, it, it, the, the two stars are moving fast in their orbits uh, as, as they're close to one another. So we see this growing each year from 2005 up to now. Uh, you, the, the separation has tripled, more than tripled, uh, about four times uh, the separation of what it was back uh, just 20 years ago. So this is great. You watch this over the next 20 years. You want a long-term observing project? Why not? Go watch this over the next 20 years and watch that separation continue to grow. Now, as we go back up here to Vendemiatrix, uh, the star at the tip of the left edge of the, the wine cup uh, of Virgo, the Y of Virgo, four degrees. Let's go, let's go more or less straight west, uh, four degrees, and you're going to come to the first of a series of three galaxies. So you've got M58, M59, and M60. M60, M59, and M58. So about four degrees, then you go another half degree, half of a finger width and, and arm's length, and you've got M59, and then you've got M58, just a little over a degree further west from there. So these are great galaxies. Now, as we look in this region, this region between Vendemiatrix and Danabola, this is the sort of center part. Uh, we're looking right into the heart of the Virgo supercluster of galaxies. Like Galaxies, remember, are the, they're self-gravitating conglomerations of stars that can have hundreds of billions of stars in them. They may not have that many, but they can have, uh, you know, 200 billion for the Milky Way, probably. Um, so we, you can have a lot of stars in a galaxy like that. And, and so these are big groupings of stars, but they just like stars themselves come in clusters. We've seen some clusters of stars the last couple of weeks. Uh, galaxies come in clusters, and then... Uh, you can have a, a group of clusters that makes a super cluster here. And so that's what we're looking at. We're looking at a very rich cluster, super cluster of galaxies in the Virgo direction. Uh, the Virgo super cluster right here. So lots of galaxies everywhere you look. But right now we're going to use Vendemiatrix to, to guide us to these three right in a row. And the first two you come to, 60 and 59, are elliptical galaxies. So galaxies largely come in two types. There are regular galaxies as well. Uh, but we think about elliptical galaxies... And elliptical galaxies look kind of like this in profile, where they're smooth all the way across. Uh, spiral galaxies are flattened in a disk. So if you look at them edge on, they look, they look like this. Spiral galaxies, this part of the spiral galaxies, like we live in, have lots of dust and gas to make new stars. And so there's new star formation going on. And you can see in pictures of spiral galaxies, you see the dark modeling of star formation regions, the gas and dust that's making stars here. The elliptical galaxies uh, have a smooth, sort of greenish glow profile. You don't see that dust and gas modeling the faces of the elliptical galaxies. Uh, in a cluster of galaxies like this, very common to have one or two, maybe three, giant elliptical galaxies that are the biggest galaxies in the cluster. And then you have the spirals that are noticeably small. The spirals are still big, but they're noticeably smaller. Lots and lots and lots of spirals. Now. For the nearby clusters, we can see, we see that there are dwarf elliptical galaxies, too. So there's a lot of very, very small elliptical galaxies in there. But as those clusters get far enough away from us, we can't see whether they're there or not, because they're so small, they're hard to see. Uh, so we think about giant elliptical galaxies like M60 and M59, no star formation, no, very little star formation, uh, very little dust and gas to make new stars. Uh, but then we get over to M58, and it's a spiral galaxy where you've got a disk here that can be making new stars like this. Lots more, lots more spiral galaxies uh, that you'll find in this region than elliptical galaxies, but the elliptical galaxies are often a little easier to spot. The giant ellipticals, because they're bigger and brighter. Uh, the dwarf ellipticals are a challenge to spot. So that's your, that's your object for the week. Do that early in the week before the moon fills out and starts to wash things out. Get out there and see if you can see these two elliptical galaxies, the spiral galaxies. Check out Parima. We say it every time we, we look at this region of the sky, so a couple of times a year we're going to talk about Parima at least. Uh, to think about uh, it's, it's opening up, and it's elliptical orbit, the separation of those two stars. And you got the moon and the planets also good this week. Uh, every time, every week is just great, right? There's always something beautiful to observe. And I hope you get a chance to go out and, and do some good observing this week. 
As always, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll have something new for you next week.